Hey and welcome, I'm your boy Solo. In this video, I'll be going over how to install the StreamFX plugin to OBS. Before I waste any more time, let's jump into it. To get started, we're just going to open our browser in a Google search and we're going to search for the OBS plugin StreamFX. This should bring up a page from obs.projects.com. Uh, we just want to click this one here. It will bring you to their main page that gives you a rundown of the plugin. I'll make sure to leave links to everything in the description below. Now feel free to read this here page, it's a lot of good info on what the plugin can do. Today I'll just be installing it, so we want to click the link that says source code URL. This will be a GitHub link, we just want to click this. I'm not going to lie, this next page is quite a bit more confusing every time I'm here. We want to find the releases. This can be found on the right hand side. We can just scroll down here a little bit until it says releases right here. It's pretty hard to see. Or we can go up here and we can type in slash releases. And this will get you to the same page as well. And no worries, I'll be making sure to leave links to everything in the description below. From here we just want to scroll down until we find a spot where it says assets. It's quite a bit down here, a lot detailed change log, and then it'll say assets. Assets. Now in here we want to make sure that we click the one that's right for your operating system. So if you're running Windows, we want to make sure that it ends with a .exe or the one that says Windows in it. It's the most obvious one that's for your operating system. This will download the Windows installer and and or you can download the zip if you know where to drag the files manually. I don't, so we'll just be using just the stock installer today. That's the easiest way and the quickest way to get up and running. Always make sure you get the latest version of this for just the best chance of compatibility. And once it's downloaded, just click it and it should start installing. Now this installs like any other application, but Windows might prompt you with the window saying, Windows protect your PC, Windows Defender smart screen prevented an unrecognized application from starting. We can just click where it says more info and this will allow you to click it run anyways. I'm going to click it because I trust this app and I trust where it comes from. So I feel comfortable clicking run anyways. I'm perfectly comfortable running this on my device. Another window will prompt you with a select install mode. We want to click on the install for all users. That one's the one that's recommended and we want to click yes here. Next, we just have to agree to the terms and you can read these here if you want to. We're just going to click accept the agreement and click next. For installation type, I want static. This will depend on if you have the portable OBS or not. We do not, so we want to pick the static installation and just click the next button again. Next, it asks the folder location. This is important. If, you, if yours is different, you need to make sure that you pick the right location. I installed OBS to the default location, so this will be very easy for me. I just need to click next, but make sure that this here points to your OBS folder location as it needs to add files to the right location in them folders for this here to work. So click next once you have that all set up correctly. Then it will prompt you with the folder already exists. This will let you know that it's in the right location. Install it anyways by clicking yes. Then next again on the create start menu folder. If you don't want that, you can click the checkbox down here. Don't create a start menu folder, but we're just going to leave this here. And if you don't want it, you can just click that and click next once you have this here all set correctly. We kept everything stock, so everything has been pretty good. If everything looks right on this here page, we're just going to click the install, watch it click install till it finishes, and click the finish button. Then we're all done installing it. From here, we're just going to open OBS and make sure that it's installed correctly. When OBS launches, it will have a few pop-ups. It didn't happen for me this year time because I've already installed it. I actually feel bad I didn't catch it the first year time, first time, but it should have given me a prompt. It should have prompted you for permission to connect to GitHub for updates. I suggest clicking yes to keep, just keep everything up to date. And you can close the other window that pops up. There should be two pop-ups that come up though. I missed them. It should have been the one for the automatic updates. It should have come up right away first thing I loaded up. But I've already did this here before when I was testing out for this year example. So it didn't load up this time. But I promise you there is two windows that will pop up asking you for permission to connect to your GitHub. 
Now, I'd suggest, like I said, connecting to the GitHub so that you automatically receive the updates for the StreamFX plugin. If you want to manually update it, that's fine. You can just manually update it each time and you don't have to worry about that pop-up and you can click the checkbox by clicking in the StreamFX drop-down menu and click on or off in here if you do happen to want to change that later on. The other page that pops up is a page of the people that helped or donated to the StreamFX project. And we're just going to go down here and add a filter. So we're going to go to our display capture and add a filter. We're just double checking to make sure that everything was added and works correctly. Once we click this here plus sign, we're going to see a lot of different options. This lets me know that it's been added correctly as 3D transforms, blur, color grading and a few other things here were added. I'll have a picture of what it looked like before and after I added the plugin. Just so you can see what it adds to your OBS. If you see these you're all set and that's everything there is to it. From here it's just up to you and your imagination to use these how you want. I would love to see what you guys create so feel free to at me on Twitter with a screenshot of how you used it in your stream or recording. But that's everything. Hope this helps get things set up. If you think I forgot or left something out, feel free to leave it in the comments below. And if you like or found this video helpful, hit the thumbs up and get subscribed for more content. Thanks for watching guys.